Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode with me, your lady friend, Bonnie. Um, I am here to do a lyrical breakdown for you guys, and I'm pretty excited about this week's. It's going to be fun. It's um, it's nothing too serious. Um, I mean, you've already, I guess, seen it in the title, but <laughs> what it is. So it's going to be um, Afro Man's Crazy Rap, otherwise known as Colt 45 and Two Zigzags. Um, yeah, but let's just get into like the housekeeping part of the, you know, the shows that we do. <laughs> um, so we are still having the grind to a thousand subscribers. We're almost there. We're like 40 away. Um, you can make it happen. <laughs> um, so we, yeah. So once we hit a thousand subscribers, we're going to be, um, giving away some Amazon gift cards for you guys. Um, and you can spend it on whatever you so choose. Um, yeah, from bongs to books, I'm sure you can get it all, right? So, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just relating it back to this. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we're going to be having uh, the first one. We're having one prize. One, well, we're having three prizes. Um, the first winner is getting um, a $100 Amazon gift card and um, a review of their choice by whoever they want. Um the second place is a $50 Amazon gift card, and third place is um, a $25 Amazon gift card. And they also get reviews, too. So we're going to be busy busy bees over here having to do reviews for everybody. But I think we're going to enjoy it, and I think it's going to be fun and a challenge. So And something new. You know, if you guys really want to see us doing something that we've never done before, I think that this is, like, your chance. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'll, oh, yeah. So also I just wanted to mention, uh, so I'm doing this video kind of like in honor of um, 420, I guess, um, because there are a fair amount of um, weed related rap songs. Um, and I thought it would be, you know, an inclusive way to like celebrate their music as well. Um, you know, and just hear some of those like kind of classic songs. So let me know if you want it to be like a month long, like a month long thing or if you want it to be, um, you know, like maybe just this week and next week, you know, just leading up to it, um, you know, and then I could dedicate like, you know, every April to just doing like weed songs or whatever. So um, if there are any that you want to see, definitely leave um, suggestions down below um, and, you know, I'm just working on it. So, I mean, I missed the first, the first week of April, but... You know, we're on to the, you know, my plan only started in the second week. So here we are. Um, <laughs> so actually, when I heard this song, um, um, so uh, it's by Afro Man. It's crazy rap. You know, like I said, the title. Um, and like I, I kind of came across this song um, a few weeks ago, honestly. Um, but not for the first time. Like I heard it and I have, like I just haven't listened to um, I just hadn't heard it, I guess, um, in many, many a year. <laughs> and it, like, it brought me back, like, right away to, like, high school. Uh, like, I, like, like, listened to it, and I was like, hey, I knew exactly who I would be hanging out with, like, listening to this, like, where I would be listening to this. And it would just be, like, so much fun. Like, it was just, like, a like nostalgic throwback when I heard this song. And I was like, I have to do this. And so that's kind of how the whole um, 420 songs, you know, weed songs started. I was just going to, you know, kind of keep up with a the theme on that. So, um, yeah, that's how this kind of started. I'm excited. I just haven't heard, you know, it's such a silly song. And I guess, like, now that I'm, like, listening to it and breaking down the lyrics... Um, it's <laughs> maybe like a, you know, a 14 year old, I guess, shouldn't be listening to this kind of stuff, but I mean, you know, it, you know, it was back in the day, I guess. <laughs> um, so this is off of his album, um, Sell Your Dope. Um, this is his third, uh, third album. And for the life of me, like I couldn't find it. I couldn't, like Google couldn't give me an answer. Um, Wikipedia wasn't giving me an answer. Um, I was getting mixed answers from, you know, like what I was seeing um, on Genius. Like there was just like two, I was getting a whole bunch of different, I, I literally had like different years. I had 2000 and I had 2001 um, and different dates when this song or this album was released. Um, so, I mean, there's two year variants there and I, you know, that you can find like Google just said 2000 and then another one said September 6, 2001. And then another one was in August of 2001. So I'm like, I'm getting mixed messages. If you guys know um, exactly when this came out, definitely let me know, leave a comment below and, you know, make my day. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a bit confusing. I don't know why. Um I guess people were high, right? That's <laughs> not his thing. Uh, so, I mean, he's he is more famous for um, 
because I got high cut song, um, which like I think was you know he that was like his big big hit. Um, I think this was maybe his like number two hit like but I don't know if everybody knows this but I did want to like share it. it's a fun story song you want to clap along you want to like get involved in it and like as stupid and as whatever as it is it's um yeah it's fun why not right <laughs> something different a little less gangster so okay so let's just start let's just get into it let's have a listen right now so right away we have, um, you know, so we get into the intro. So it's sort of him telling his buddies what's happening. Okay, so um, it starts off with, wait a minute, man. Hey, check this out, man. Tell it. It was this blind man, right? It was this blind man, right? He was feeling his way down the street with a stick, right? Hey, he walked past with this fish market. You know what I'm saying? He stopped. He took a deep breath. He said, whoo good morning ladies <laughs> like it's just and that's that's how the song starts so I mean it kind of gives you like a bit of a reference to kind of how it's going to go um you know he's telling his friends about some guy that he knows or it's just like you know kind of like a tall tale or whatever just some funny little story um and a little bit sexist but it's 2000 so I feel like you know it still kind of worked it was still like a little bit acceptable um, and, you know, he's just, like, chatting up these ladies with potentially fishy vaginas. So, um, which I don't think is ever a good thing. Um, you know, you could definitely have that checked out. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that, that's it. Let's keep going. Um, you like that shit, man? Hey, man, I've got a gang of that shit, man. Hey, I'll tell you what. We'll all have a good time. We'll fool on the drum. And hey, hey, if everybody crowd around the mic, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell all these motherfucking, all these motherfucking jokes I got. First, I'm going to start off like that. Hey, help me sing it, homeboy. So, um, yeah, so he's just kind of saying like, if you like that story, he's got a whole bunch more and like their jokes and like whatever. You know, he's always going to clearly like he's, he's going to tell us a story. He's going to, you know, there's, he's going to give us something funny to like let us listen to um, and like, if this was any indication of sort of like what, like the rest of the song is going to be like, um, you know, then I think it's going to clearly be like a sexual funny story, but like clearly with like a smooth player, like as like the main protagonist, <laughs> I guess, of his stories. Right. Um, so he kind of gets everybody involved with like the beat making and hypes himself up a beat and like gets everybody like going and like, it's fun. And like, you know, he he makes it want to be, like, a shared experience. And he, like, wants, like, you, like, the listener, or, you know, I, I'm guessing he's talking to, like, his buddies and, you know, the people who he's making the music with. But it kind of sounds like you, too. Um, he kind of wants you to, like, help him sing it and, like, just have fun with him and, like, get involved and do whatever and just hang out and get high, you know, whatever. So, I mean, I think it's fun. So, yeah, so <laughs> that's it. And so let's get into the hook, which we hear several times um, throughout the song. So um, it is said Colt 45 and two zigzags. Baby, that's all we need. Um, we can go to the park after dark, smoke that tumbleweed. As the marijuana burn, we can take our turn singing them dirty rap songs. To uh, Stop and hit the bong like Cheech and Chong and sell tapes from here to Hong Kong. So roll, roll, roll my joint, pick out the seeds and stems, feeling high as hell, flying through Palmdale, skating on Dayton rims. So roll, roll the 83 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. If my, tapes, if my tapes and my CDs just don't sell, I bet my caddy will. So that's like, you know, like the name of the song is Crazy Rap, but everybody calls it like Colt 45 or Colt 45 and Two Zigzags. And it's just because of like the chorus and the hook that you hear so much. And um, it just, I feel like that suits it better than Crazy Rap. I mean, as much as, you know, whatever. <laughs> it is crazy though. Um, so basically they're just like sitting around enjoying, you know, a cheap beer. I mean, a Colt 45 is like a malted beer. Um, I'm not... I don't know the difference between regular beer and malted beers, but I know everything that I've ever had that was malted didn't taste good. <laughs> Except, like, the, the candies, like the little malt candies you can get. Um, yeah, not a fan of malt, I guess. 
um yeah so i think you can get it in like big bottles too so i think it's like cheap and um decent percentage of alcohol or whatever you know i think it's just like cheap you know cheap liquor um so they're just like hanging out and smoking some weed and like that's all they need in life and like that's all they need in this song and that's you know that's it um so they can go to the park late at night and and get high because there's no kids around and it's you know usually pretty empty um and they'll hang out smoke weed and spit some rhymes they'll stop and hit a bong to get high like Cheech and Chong who I mean like I feel like most people know who they are or like have a sense of them but you know they're basically 70s potheads um if you've ever seen that 70s show um one of one of them is in that um and then we have the and then the row 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 your boat um kind of sound when he's saying like roll 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 your joint um or his his joint I think um he tells you when he you know basically like takes out like teaches you like the tips for you know like what you need in in a joint you know take out the seeds the, the seeds and the stems um so he's just kind of like letting you know like you know he wants a nice i guess clean joint <laughs> um so he's feeling super high and he's just like driving around palmdale which is um like a like a city or a town or a community um near la um and his car has some like fancy rims on his tires of his like 1983 cadillac coupe de ville which um like i looked up this car and like i'm guessing it's supposed to be like a pimp car or whatever and like you know, this is 2000, so I don't really know why they want an 83 car that I just find is to be, like, like right away, I was like, that's an ugly car. Um, so, so, no, sorry, guys, who have, the, like, these kinds of cars. I don't personally like them, and I just, like, look at that, and I'm like, that is horrible for the environment, like, and I know it. It's just, like, bad all around. Unless you get it, like, all cleaned up and, like, change it out and whatever, then you can do whatever you want. But for me, it's just, like, a huge ugly car <laughs> but you know whatever you know um <laughs> that's my opinion um i don't have any car so there's that <laughs> um so yeah uh so i mean it's just not my cup of tea um but like i guess like he thinks that like, you know because he has this like fancy car or i don't know how fancy it is like i don't know how much they would cost um He's kind of saying, like, if it's, like, music and, like, his CDs and tapes and, like, because, you know, it was, they were still making, like, music on cassettes, you know, back then, um, then he'll sell his car. And, like, he's just pretty casual about, like, the whole thing. Like, he doesn't, you know, he's just kind of like, well, you know, if the money thing doesn't work out, I'll just sell my car, you know, just as long as I've got enough for weed. Like, <laughs> you know, kind of, I think that's sort of his attitude. Okay, so verse one. Um, well, it was just sundown in a small white town. They call it East Side Palmdale. When the Afro man walked through the white land, houses went up for sale. When I was standing on the corner selling rap CDs, when I met a, when I met a little girl named Jan, I let her ride in my caddy because I didn't know her daddy was the leader of the, of the Ku Klux Klan. So the story begins... <laughs> um, and just after dark in his neighborhood, he, um, you know, or this neighborhood that he's in, um, he kind of like, you know, went through it, was walking around. And like, I guess like the people there are like just so racist um, and like, they, or they just hate on him or whatever. You know, like he's like, like the epitome of like what they don't want in their community, you know, so like they're all leaving, like they don't want any of that. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, don't, I don't really know that a drunk high guy is really that that big of a problem he'd probably just not really do that much at any anyways <laughs> but um yeah <laughs> that's my opinion he can move in next door i don't mind <laughs> um yeah so he's just you know sort of like he's just saying like yeah there he was just selling his music you know minding his own business doing what he got to do um and then he meets this girl named uh, jan um and he lets her ride in his car um but you know and he does this unknowingly to you know but he doesn't know anything but like you know the her father is not a fan of black people i would say um yeah he's the leader of the ku klux klan um which is if you don't know what it is they're basically a I guess a terrorist type of a group um 
but they're just very racist <laughs> um, against basically anything that isn't a white person. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> not all that inclusive. Um, so yeah, so we fucked on the bed, fucked on the floor, fucked so long I grew a fucking afro. Then I fucked to the left, left, fucked to the right, right. Um, she sucked my dick till the shit turned white. Thought to myself, Sheba Sheba, got my ass looking like a zebra. I put on my clothes and I was on my way until her daddy pulled up in a Chevrolet. So... Yep. <laughs> um, so he didn't know uh, who or what her father was, you know, and he obviously went and had like all the sex with her, um, you know, basically saying like they fucked everywhere in all the positions and for a long, long time because he had time to grow an afro. Um, <laughs> and then she sucked him for so long that his dick turned white. Mm, like like all the colors off like that's the only thing I can think of like I I don't know what else would maybe like I I'm not gonna try to visualize that <laughs> you guys can do that for me um and he he thought to himself Sheba Sheba um which means um is apparently a slang term for weed which I guess makes sense um and his butt I'm assuming is covered in lines um, you know, like a zebra, and I'm guessing it's maybe from like a whip or something, whatever was going on. Um, but he put on his clothes and he was on his way. He, you know, he basically just, he wants to go get weed. Um, and he's on his way out when, um, the, the father pulls up, I guess, like into like the driveway or whatever. Um, and he's kind of like, oh shit. Like he obviously doesn't want to like get caught. Um, and that's exactly what, well. <laughs> uh, and so I, I ran, I jumped out the back window, but her daddy, he was waiting with a two by four. Oh, he beat me to the left, beat me to the right. This motherfucker whooped my ass all night, but I ain't mad at her prejudiced dad. That's the best damn pussy I ever had. Got a bag of weed and a bottle of wine. I'm going to fuck that bitch just one more time. So, um, yeah, he, he's just, he tries to get away from, from, you know, her father, um, to get away from him. And he tries to go like jump out the back window and which is also kind of like pretty suspicious already. Like if you're climbing out some, someone's window, um, but her dad is quick and he's like already there and he's there with a two by four. And, you know, if you don't know what that is, it's a plank of wood basically. Um, you know, Afro man got, you know, beat pretty hard, um, by, by him, um, and basically it's like the same rhyme scheme, um, like he beat me to the left, beat me to the right, like same sort of thing as like the last, um, set of lines. So he has like an interesting flow. Um, I really like that, you know, it's very interesting and kind of like Dr. Seussy sort of like, but you know, very different. It's just, I don't know. It's a fun, it's a fun beat. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's it. Um, so, yeah, he's not mad at um, her father's ways. You know, he's just kind of saying, like, you know, it's, I guess it's pointless to give them, like, energy. Um, and, like, I think, you know, maybe this is 2000 or so. Um, you know, there were still a lot of people that were living, and I, I guess that still are living, um, who were living at a time where it was, I guess, acceptable to be, or more acceptable to be um, outrightly racist and, like, Div like divisive like that so I guess in some ways it makes sense but not really <laughs> um it never makes sense um yeah <laughs> I mean that was the best I could like justify it um and then that just doesn't like go away from you you know you, you don't just forget about it I think in some cases yeah but whatever we're not gonna get into that whole conversation <laughs> um so he doesn't really care because Jan was the best, best sex of his life and like nothing can like taint that perception of like that for him. And he, and he you know, he, he's obviously get left and he went home or whatever. And so he kind of grabs a bag of weed and some, you know, a bottle of wine because he's going back for more of Jan. You know, he, it's, it's worth getting beat up for basically, you know, he's, you know, and like she's probably doing it to kind of get back at her father if like, he's such a racist, you know, like, I guess it would make sense too, but it's a win-win for both of them, I guess, sort of in a weird way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that was the first verse. <laughs> so we're getting into the hook and 
you know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's this and Colt 45 and two zigzags. Maybe that's all we need. Blah, 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 blah. First two. <laughs> uh, it is fun. So, I mean, you should definitely listen to this. So, yeah, verse two, um, I met this lady in Hollywood. She had green hair, but damn, she looked good. I took her to my house because she was fine, but she whooped out a dick that was bigger than mine. I, I met this lady from Japan, never made love with an African. Um, I fucked her once. I fucked her twice. I ate that pussy like shrimp fried rice. Um, so he he's in Hollywood. He's met this lady. Um, you know, with green hair and, you know, I'm guessing it's a wig or dyed or whatever. Um, so they go to, to have sex and then, you know, he sees that she's, you know, has this giant penis. So, you know, and I guess I'm guessing he probably left, you know, maybe he's stuck around. I don't know, whatever he's into. Um, but, um, yeah, he probably left at that point. <laughs> um, or maybe he stuck around and, they just got high together. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, L.A. is a crazy place. It's full of crazy things. Don't think anybody doesn't have what you think they might have, if that makes sense. Um, so he, he meets a, a Japanese girl who, who never slept with a black guy. Um, so they have sex a couple of times. And then he eats her out like a, like a Chinese food dish, um, which is kind of weird and slightly racist. <laughs> I, I guess like I want to kind of just be like, it was 2000. It was fine. <laughs> it's practically the 90s. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was weird, but um, there's not really, I can't really say much else. Um, it, it's, it's a funny line. I'll say that much. Um, don't be amazed at the stories I tell ya. Tell ya, I met a woman in the heart of Australia. I had a big butt and big titties too, so I hopped in her ass like a kangaroo. See, I met this woman from Hawaii, stuck it in her ass, and she said, Aye. Um, lips was breakfast, pussy was lunch, then her titties busted open with Hawaiian punch. I met Colonel Sanders' wife in the state of Kentucky. She said I'd make some... <laughs> I'd fry some chicken if you just fuck me. I came in her mouth. It was a crisis. I gave her my secret blend of herbs and spices. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> so um, he's impressing you with his, you know, fantabulous stories that he's got um, to tell you. Um, and he's obviously a well-traveled fellow. Um, I don't really know if he gets involved too much with the culture, um, but he definitely... He does what he does and all over the world. Um, so um, he met, met this girl in Australia, um, and she was quite curvy, um, and they engaged in anal sex, um, and which is not something that I think a kangaroo would do. But, I mean, I may be wrong. Maybe they're into that. Um, <laughs> he clearly is. Um, met a lady from Hawaii, um, and then he, you know, they also engage in anal sex <laughs> and um she cries out i guess obviously like when he like you know first gets in there um you know she screams out Aye! and you know i guess that's like anyways the noise that she made um <laughs> describes you know her and what he did to her um and that there was a special treat in her boobs you know hawaiian punch which is pretty delicious um, I really hope that, um, for me, when I think of Hawaiian punch, it's red. Um, so I hope that there's nothing red that's coming out of her, her breasts. Let's just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> so he meets, um, Colonel Sanders and, you know, he meets his wife in Kentucky. And, um, fun fact for anybody that doesn't live in Quebec, um, uh, we call it PFK here, um, which stands for Poulet. Uh, poulet fried, I don't know, poulet frit de Kentucky or something. <laughs> it's basically like chicken fried from Kentucky. So it's, um, yeah, PFK, not KFC. Um, you'll find that in all the signs in Quebec. Um, so she offered some of, you know, her chicken and like if, if, she ha if he has sex with her and like how can you turn that down? Like this is the colonel's wife and he's, she's offering to make you some fried chicken. I'm sorry, like Yes. <laughs> I would have sex with her. <laughs> I'm like, that's like straight from the horse's mouth. You know what I mean? So 
yeah, so you can't really turn it down. And then um, and then he he finishes in her mouth and he says, you know, he, he gives her his own flavor from his semen, <laughs> which is gross and um, funny, I guess, at the same time. So, yeah, then we have uh, the hook again. Um, I guess like so, sort of like a shortened version of like, um, it seemed, yeah, I feel like it's shorter this time. Uh, maybe just like the first part of like the, the chorus. Okay, and then we have verse three. Um, I met Dolly Parton in Tennessee. Her titties were filled with Hennessy. That country music really drove me crazy, but I rode that ass and said, yes, Miss Daisy. Met this lady in Oklahoma, put that pussy in a coma. Met this lady in Michigan. I can't wait till I fuck that bitch again. Met a real black girl down in South Carolina. Fucked her until she turned into a white albina. Um, fuck this hooker in Iowa. I fucked her on credit, so I owe her. <sighs> yeah, so he, he has met, um, Dolly Parton, which is really cool. I mean, I, I would be, ex- I would be, yeah, I would be very excited if I saw her. Um, you know, and her boobs are, her boobs are filled with booze, not just silicone. Um, so, um, and he, he was there and he hated the country music and it was driving him crazy, but, you know, he dealt with it and he had sex, um... And was kind of acting like uh, a servant, I guess, you know, like, you know, Miss Daisy. You know, from the film, like, Driving Miss Daisy. Um, uh, he had sex with a girl from Oklahoma. And it was so amazing that, like, after, like, her vagina couldn't even function. It was in a coma. It was like, yep, he did a great job, I guess. Um, <laughs> meets a girl from Michigan. And he looks forward to having sex with her again. Um He's excited, I guess, to go back to Michigan. I'm guessing Detroit. That's a pretty, like, it's a pretty fun, fun place, um, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so he has sex with um, a very dark-skinned girl um, in uh, South Carolina. And he has sex with her until all of her, um, until she lost all of her pigment. I'm not explaining me that. Um, that doesn't make that much sense to me. But then again... There's a lot of questionable things going on in this song. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to say, um, yeah, she didn't turn white unless it was a different girl. I don't know. Um, and then in Iowa, he had sex with a girl, you know, a prostitute, I guess, basically for free. Um, so fuck this girl down in Georgia. Came in her mouth. Man, I thought I told you. Met this beautiful, sexy hoe. She just ran across the border of Mexico. A fine young thing said her name's Maria. I wrapped her up just like a hot tortilla. I want to get married, but I can't afford it. I know I'm I'm a cry when she gets deported. Sad story. So he has sex with this girl in Georgia, uh, and he thought he already kind of told you about her. Like he's you know got so many stories. Um, and then he he met this beautiful Mexican girl who you know ran across the the U.S. Mexican border. If only there was a wall or something that was you know put up there to keep those Mexicans out (laughs) um yeah so he loves this girl Maria um you know he you know he he almost wants to marry her he almost loves her that much but then he's like it's too expensive it's too inconvenient um and then he's just kind of like you know he could marry her and she could probably stay right but then you know he's just kind of like I'll be sad when she's deported like he's not really committing to anything he's just kind of like a easy pre you know easy beasy kind of guy so then we have the hook again, um, and we have verse four. Have you ever went to a girl's house to fuck, but the pussy just ain't no good? I mean, you getting upset because you can't get her wet, plus you go, <laughs> plus you in the wrong neighborhood. So you try to play it off and eat the pussy, but it take, but it take her so long to come. Then a dude walk in, that's her big boyfriend, and he asks you where you're from. So you wipe your mouth and you try to explain. This is a crazy story. <laughs> so he he's kind of like asking asking you a question, like, have you ever been in this like kind of situation where this kind of thing happened? Like that's basically, you know, he just wants you to like, have you ever been in his shoes? Like he kind of wants to feel like somebody else has been in this situation, right? Um, and so he ever, you know, went over to a girl's house to have sex and then, you know, things just weren't working there. You know, she's she's not getting wet and, you know, he feels awkward and like, you know, maybe he's in, like, the wrong neighborhood where he's got, you know, maybe haters or whatever. Um, 
And he tries to forget about it and then just kind of, like, go down on her, you know, but that takes forever and, like, you know, nothing's working. So, um, and then, you know, while he was, like, down there, um, her, her boyfriend, like, walks in and, like, asks, like, who the hell are you, basically? And, like, he, like, wipes his mouth and you're just like, oh, like, there's, there's no good answer. (laughs) Um, this is sort of like a wasn't me kind of situation, I think. (laughs) Um, so you start talking fast, but he already mad because you fucking his woman. So he start beating on your ass. Now your clothes are, now your clothes all muddy. And your nose all bloody. Your dick was hard, but now it's soft. You thought you had a girl to rock your world, but now, now you still gotta go jerk off. So he tries to speak quickly. Um, you know, like you know, he's kind of like. Like, you know, mustering up an answer quickly, just kind of saying, like, oh, what, like, you know, what's going on? Like, he's obviously caught, you know, like, you know, he's just trying to, like, talk his way out of it, I guess. Um, but, like, nothing he says is obviously going to be good enough. Like, there's no good answer for being caught in that position. Um, and then he basically just, like, beats him up and, like, throws him out, I guess. And he's all, like, bloody and muddy. Um, but, like... <laughs> He's not really so concerned about that. He's just kind of like, well, shit, like now I'm gonna have blue balls, so I have to go home and take care of myself and like jerk off. And you're just like, what a guy, <laughs> right? Like, um, and then we have um, basically like the the last couple of lines, um, which are basically the hook again or part of the hook. Um, basically, just the said Colt forty five and two zigzags. Baby, that's all we need. We can go to the park after dark. Smoke that tumbleweed. So basically, um, it's a whole long funny song um, about like Afro man's like inner thoughts, I guess, and like stories and like people that he's encountered and experiences that he's had, and he's kind of like telling you like all of his like travel travel tales and like he's he's, he's telling you a lot in like this one song, um, you know, and that he he drinks and he smokes a lot. Um, I think he mostly smokes weed, um, but I mean he's obviously just like a an easygoing guy, you know, and just takes life every day as it comes. And I think that that's, um, he's an interesting guy. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm sure, I don't know what he's like nowadays. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, he's fun. It, like, the music video is, like, silly and fun. Um, it's, you know, the one I watch is, like, highly edited. So, like, every second word was bleeped. Um, I didn't want to, you know, do that to you guys. <laughs> so I got through the whole thing. Um... Yeah, so that's it. Um, if there's um, any, like, suggestions, like I said, you know, that you want to see me to do, want to see me do uh, next week, um, I think I already have another plan for another, like, marijuana-related song. If you guys don't want to see this, then let me know absolutely down in the comments below as well. Um, if you do want to see this, like, like this video, um, and then, uh, yeah, then I mean, you're subscribed, and, or, you know, you're going to like this, and then I'll know that you actually like this kind of stuff and we can figure that out from there um so yeah don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment in the video to win um our contest and um i have twitter now guys i'm up to like seven (laughs) seven people following me um you guys you guys can make this happen like i want to be able to like chit chat with you guys and like know what's going on and like you know, getting like to your world and you into my world so um check out my twitter it is at y lf bonnie (laughs) um yeah and i know i'm you know working on it slowly but surely um so yeah i mean thanks for hanging out with me and for um you know i hope that your 420 is going really well um or you know if you're obviously watching it you know before 420 i hope your day is going really well (laughs) um yeah so that's it um thanks for sticking around and um that's all for me bye guys